because it is a little bit of a process and if you uh, have to use this you definitely will will want to know you need some light let me see if I can get you some bright stage light oh yeah And remember, those front two pockets are monitor one. Okay, thank you, Fred. Now, I'm going to turn some music on here. I'm going to turn it off in the house for now. Okay, it's rolling. It's not in the house signal system. Now, for me to get to those monitors, I have to find the channels. These are my inputs over here. This is just grouping and outputs. So I've got to go to my aux in, which I'm on. I have to select the channel. That's burned, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, so I've selected that channel, so now I can work on my monitors. On this row of buttons we have bus 1 through 8. They call these buses instead of monitors but if I push this button you'll see that my masters for those monitors pop up. Monitor 1, monitor 2, monitor 3. How could I hang myself right now? If I was pushing mute buttons and I muted those, you would have muted your masters. Okay? They, those stay unmuted. So those are my masters. Now that I have that selected, I want to select, since he plugged into monitor one, I want to select monitor one. There is a, this is the major button right here, sends on fader. Now, since I've selected monitor one and I'm on the layer with my music, I push sends on fader. This becomes my monitor knobs. That's in the monitor speaker right now. Okay, so we have music playing in the monitor. I want to get back to my house system. Push the flashing red button. Okay? push the flashing red button and that takes me to my house except if you notice this didn't change yet I have to go back to my group layer DCA 1 through 8 so now there's the house system okay <coughs> now you notice when I muted the house my monitors didn't go away when I mute in the group section, it doesn't go away there. If I mute over here, my monitors do go away. Okay? So, there's, you have to kind of understand that this is inputs and this is grouping. Or, let's say we didn't use the grouping at that point, we stayed on this layer. If you want your monitors to go away, then you're going to have to mute on this layer. But you got to kind of get your head around. If I'm looking at this, oh, how come I don't have music? Because I've muted on that other layer. So, I'm going to go back to the aux in and unmute. Get to the microphone layer. I've muted my house, but I still have music because. So, the group does not mute the individual channel it just mutes the house at that point so that's something to kind of understand if you have to fade something out if you have to do a music fade you're going to have to get to your channel to do it I know that's probably a little above what some people will be using but you need to know that part when we've got things grouped okay uh, back to the monitor let's do monitors again let's say we want less of those monitors I'm going to turn music back on. I've turned it down in the house. Get over so I can kind of see. So, 
Bus, one through eight, puts me on my monitor layer. You can see I've got monitor one happening. It's selected, sends on fader, push. Now I can pull those out of the monitor. To the monitor. What if I want vocal mic in the monitor? Well, I've got to go to the vocal channel. I see that it's not in there, but it is in the house. So let me pull it out of the house. How do I get back to the house? If I push this one button, group one through eight, to get me back to the house, it will kill this flashing red button. And I'm back to the house. So I'm going to pull my vocal mic down out of the house. When I say house, I mean what the, what the audience is going to hear. So I pull it down in the house so it's not bothering us. So now let's go back to bus one through eight. Monitors, it's selected already. So I want to go to sends on fader. That means the things I'm going to send to the monitor. The things I'm going to send to the monitor are now on the faders. So let's push that button. Sends on fader. I push. There's my vocal mic because I'm on this layer. I'm going to bring it up in the monitor. Monitor, one, two, three. There's some vocal mic in the monitor for the singer to be able to hear themselves. And, okay, so I've got that set. And I want to get back to my house sound. One button here, group. Get back to the group. That'll kill my monitor. No more flashing red button. And I can bring the vocal mic up in the house. They have monitors, and you're off and running. Okay, questions? I know this video, you'll have to kind of go back through and go yeah. back through that sequence. That's real, man. Yeah. <laughs> that, Once or twice. That sequence is what you, you know, most singers will have to do. Yeah. Okay, that sequence. So that's an important sequence. And so as Jack breaks this video up into swaths for you, you know, you can pull that up. All right, here it is on the iPad. All right, this reminds me how to do it. So, when you come in to, to go over it and look at it and practice, you're going to practice doing monitors. You're going to get it in the monitor. Set one up. You could even face it towards you so you could hear it a little bit. You practice that. You practice turning on mics. Practice unmuting mics. Practice doing music. Those are the things you're going to and if you have questions, Karen has my cell number. I can usually talk you through what you need to get to on the console. Is there like a reset button where things get all awry, it's critical, time's coming up, she's starting to sing, like you get hit a reset button, kind of get things out of adjustment, back to normal? Only if you've stored it in the perfect fashion. Okay. If you've got it like you like it, and you have stored the scene. Mm -hmm. You're going to store a scene with the name of the playhouse or um, what's that? Tuna. Greater Tuna. Oh, greater right. Tuna. Greater Tuna. If you, yeah, if you've stored those, then the answer is yes. Okay. If you haven't stored those, then... It's like that'd be a good idea. Yeah. As since if you're getting used to the board, to have a, a backup, a plan B when things go awry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Getting your head around the signal flow is a big, big thing here. Understanding that we have inputs and we have outputs and where the monitors are at. Because I know as you look at it, there's a lot of things we're not talking about, but we want to be able to turn on a mic right now so that when Karen walks in, Karen can push 9 through 16, these different layers. We want to go through and look at these different layers and it's okay to go through and push these buttons. It kind of, and you can read what they are. So as you're becoming familiar with those buttons, there's wireless one. So now I can unmute and I, I have a microphone. It's already set right. Over here, we can push buttons. You can see um, the mono center channel, which is actually being used for our sub feed. Left and right are the left and rights. I can push buttons here. It still shows some different buses that we're not using at this time. There's a whole complement of effects built in that I won't even get into right now, but they're there. Um, more monitor, and then there's our monitor. They're labeled. Monitor 1, monitor 2, monitor 3. How did I label it? This is called a scribble strip. 
back in the old days, analog consoles, they would leave a strip up there and that you could do a uh, pin on and scribble on, or we'd lay tape and we'd write on the tape and scribble on the tape. So that's called your scribble strip. And in my setup screen, there's a whole host of, and there's a scribble strip tab that I went to and I could select channels and you can see as I select it, I can edit it, I gave it colors, I could give it little symbols, there's all sorts of things that you can do on that scribble strip. And that is in the setup tab. Just out of curiosity, is there user profiles you can set up for the console? Because if there's going to be three or four or five different people using it, uh, you might leave it one way and Dan's going to be thinking it's going to be set up the same way he left it, but now it's different because what I, was on it. What I would do is I would save a Dan scene. That's where, if, if we went through and I recalled the uh, training scene and I put Dan's name in it, mm -hmm. it would be a copy of my starting scene. Okay? Or if I went down there and we went, <clears throat> okay, I recalled the legacy BA scene and we scrolled down and we stored it as Jack. Mm -hmm. Then you have a start basis to begin just like you left it that's right and yeah. so if you would like to do individual profiles that's how you would do it because you never want to store any of the things that you've done over that initial legacy BA scene ideally though it would be better if everyone used a zip drive to store their own individual data I would think oh you can always back it up I know but, I'm just but it will be stored on the console yeah. so it's stored on both both places so you've got a backup, but if you walk in, it's still going to say Jack. Yeah. Because if you save just scenes, well, it's going to save a Jack scene that you'll have on your thumb drive, too. It's going to save a Dan scene. So as you, you could do that, if you say, all right, I like the way I've got this set up for this particular setup, you could save it. But I would always start with, number one, and for instance, here's how you do that. I come in, tab over to scenes, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna recall legacy BA. So that's the very first startup scene here. So I'm going to load number one. I obviously loaded that or stored that with those channels open. Okay, so I'm gonna stop that music right now. So now, let's go through, and I want to store, I'm gonna say Jack. And I'm just gonna put it down here on number 10. Okay, so I've scrolled to number 10, and I want to save. What we're saving is the initial startup screen. So save, and I'm gonna call it Jack. And we're basically, Okay, and his name is in there. Oh, I can do capital letters, lowercase, and numbers. You just scroll it over there to do that. So we have Jack on number 10. And so now... Let's at ground zero. Everything. You're, you're at ground zero of how we start. Now, you can do all you want. As long as you save it on Jack, mm -hmm. you won't mess with anybody else. You don't ever want to get on top of somebody. Okay. Is the original configuration, which thank you called legacy BA or something like that, is that locked down so it can't be erased and right. can't be messed is with? Is it right protected? Yeah. It is not right protected. Um, it's not like that should be backed up. That is one thing that the security and the administration security protocols on this console is not as good as some of the higher level you know, where you can lock people out or lock people out of settings. No, you just need to know to keep the integrity of everybody else for it all to function well, you got to be conscious of, all right, uh, I don't want to store over. And so everybody needs to know that part. Don't store over somebody else and store you on a, on a, a location that's open. But the protection to do that would be to load it right now on a zip drive and put it away somewhere so you got the original. That's, a, that's what I'm thinking. There you can, you can always back it up. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. So if you, you go get back to the original. The, that's right. That's the, and you will always have it too, right? Well, and the only thing I won't have is after several months yeah. and everybody's kind of stored their new scenes, I won't have those. But, but you'll have, have the original. I'll original. have the original. I'll yeah. have the original. Now yeah. you showed backing up how do you get it off the zip on here. Okay. Let's just plug it sure, in. It's easy, but... <clears throat> Load the zip drive. Mm -hmm. Watch, make sure it comes on. Because if you don't seat it just right, it yeah. won't load up. All right, we saw the light. So now, for me to load, to reload the console. Well, let's just say we wanted to load scene, scene information only. Let's say you didn't want everything. Since I'm on the scenes tab, I can hit utility. Import scenes. When I push import scenes, It'll show me things that are on that thumb drive. But it reads what? Okay, it reads your drive. Reads the drive. Okay. okay, I won't load those because I don't really right. know what all. The, so okay. I'm going to cancel. But you didn't highlight a scene and just hit what load? That's right. You could do that. Yeah. Now, I'm going to load the whole console. Say I backed it up, and so I'm going to go back to home. And when I push utility, it allows me to import a show. So, if I push import show now I can scroll through here and I'll be able to find legacy oh, okay so as I scroll down through there see I've got oh there it is legacy show so I highlight that legacy show and select I would push select and um, I'm not going to reload it it's already on there but I would push select and it'd say load and push you see the blue line do it again and it will be backed up does it say are you sure <laughs> yes, it does. It does yeah, give you those. Cool. What are the file extensions? You know, when you actually read this on a computer, what's the file extension? S H W. S H W. Yeah, for show. Yeah. So when you see it on your computer, I don't know what it looked like, but it may, it may, it may your One computer may say, <laughs> it may say, does it recognize yeah. file or oh. something? <laughs> it does on the console. So I'm going to cancel out of that, and since I haven't done anything, I can pull my thumb drive. Okay. More questions? You're not going to give us a quiz or anything, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It, it goes by fast, but let's go back over the basic right quick. To get a mic up and on, after I've powered the system up, if I go to my, if I push home up here, it kind of gets the uh, console. Always go home. Home is a wonderful place, and so I can always push my home button and go home and kind of get back to a general sense. So, I want to make sure that if I'm on channel one through eight, I can see all of those channels. But Karen will be using a wireless mic to announce an MC. So, if I'm on nine through sixteen, I see W one. And you see it happening right there. I can unmute it, and I have sound going. That's the basic. If I need monitors, did we already preset the equalizer for mic one? Yes. For 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 these mics now, all of the jacks up there, they're not preset. They are from scratch. Just the wireless. Just the wireless that she has. Okay. So I can get a microphone up and going. As long as it's powered on, it has batteries. If I want to see that, uh, yes, sir, you see a green light down there? Yep. There's six receivers, you see a green light? Yes, I'm happening. All of those, there's antenna distros that come up, and this is your one wireless mic paddle um, right here facing the stage. So, okay, that's the basic.